we are going today to show uh, the how to create the reinforcement using uh, great tech advanced design and how to check them uh, later on so um, the webinar schedule is a um, uh, presentation of uh, what we are going to show in this webinar and then uh, the live demonstration and then there will be um, a little part with uh, in which I will give you some information to uh, how to have any trial license uh, and uh, and if you have any question then we will look at them so <clears throat> Uh, what we are going to show. Uh, initially, I will present you the model I've created for this webinar uh, and uh, all the, the input uh, I have set in the design setting to run then the concrete design in this structure. And then uh, we are going to show, um, we are going to start with the concrete slabs and to see um, the reinforcement we have set and how to check and how to change them. And then uh, we're going to see um, the same uh, for concrete columns and concrete beams. Um, so <clears throat> I start with my model. I will explain you a little bit uh, what I have created. So it's a simple structure in concrete. As you can see, columns are uh, 30 per 50 uh, centimeters in the first two floors, while in the third one, they are 30 per 40. Uh, beams as well are 300 per 500 millimeters or 30 per, four, uh, per 50 centimeters as well. Um, on uh, all the um, edge of the structure. Uh, concrete floors are on the top and the first floor uh, and exactly they are 140 millimeters and 180. We have a little balcony here in the front and um, uh, if I turn off my slab, as you can see, I have instead here uh, load areas, and here my beams are uh, the base is uh, wider than the high. Then I have uh, I will show you my loads. So I've set a couple of point loads here, here, on one of this slab, and uh, in this column to then show you um, the differences uh, during my calculation. Uh, and then, most important of all, combinations. So here, when you set the combination, you need to be sure that you have set combination in this area, so under concrete. And these are the combination we are used for the ultimate, ultimate limit state, and this for the serviceability one. So if you haven't set anything in this area, the design won't, won't be taken. So how to run uh, the analysis? Um, in this case, we can go here in settings for the concrete or in this area, analysis uh, settings Reinforced concrete design, design settings. It's the same button. So if you go on that, in this area, uh, there is, this is the standard for the slabs. And then we go uh, to the beam calculation and we can set the number of bars, the diameters, uh, and the number of layers. So looking at the width and the height. And um, here in this area, we have uh, instead the column calculations. Uh, the reinforcement, 
in this case I've set that my reinforcement uh, I want they be uh, from diameter 8 millimeters uh, to 16 and transversal 6 to 12. You can change it so you can set for each of your element uh, which one you want. Trusses are the mesh for the slabs. Punching verification and here another thing, important thing is uh, uh, when you go and you want to calculate your column and beams you need to uh, to calculate your column you need to verify your column and detail the bar. When you click on that it's going to calculate your rebars um, and uh, every time you run the analysis it's going to do it again and again if you don't tell them to uh, if you don't impose some uh, values of the rebars. So it's going to make it from uh, from zero, let's say from scratches again, all the detail, all the rebars calculation. And this is for the concrete deflection. Uh, in this case, it's going, the iteration number is how many times it's going to iterate the calculation. We will see that it's going to do it two times. Okay, a uh, little bit more of information. So in beams and columns, I haven't set any information. While in, in my slab, I have already set uh, the mesh. Sorry. So in the uh, in this top floor, the mesh I've been defined is uh, with bars. So I have set phi uh, di diameter eight millimeters at a distance of three hundred millimeters. So this is my space on the top and on the bottom for both X and Y direction. In this case, instead, both for, for all these slabs of, of the first floor, I've defined a mesh. So I've, I've been to fabric main and I've set my mesh. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to run, in this case, the analysis. Should, I, should not take long and uh, as we will see in the common line is going to do it uh, to do two iteration to calculate the deflection and the uh, cracking. So this is the first iteration is doing. And as you can see, it's giving me a warning about uh, two large open, um, crackings, openings. And now is resetting everything and is doing the second iteration. And also in this case, we have in plate number three, two large crack openings. So we see which is plate number three is on the top one and now uh, we are going to see uh, in details how to uh, check my rebars in the slab. So we start from the slab and the first thing I'm going to show you is uh, this tab. So reinforcement is the reinforcement uh, he needs uh, to, uh, to verify the element. So this is for column and beams, this is for my slabs and walls, etc. And this is uh, the, um, the rebars uh, for uh, in, in X direction for the bottom and uh, Y direction bottom and uh, top, the, top X, top Y. What I'm going to see is rear reinforcement, so what I had set in reality and what I've set is a mesh, 393 in this floor, and this is the sum of the fee of the eight diameter bars, 300 millimeter space. I set the same for top, 
bottom in uh, uh, in x and y direction. So this is top. How to check my reinforcement? So here is telling me in uh, this area I'm going to select for the moment my slabs on the first floor and uh, I'm going to see the difference between the theori the theoretical uh, rebar dimension, rebar quantity and uh, the real one, so the one I've set. In the x direction inferior, so bottom. So I'm going to see it and uh, as I've sh shown you I had set a uh, um, a point load in this area. So as you can see in this area in x direction, so in this for this length, it needs more rebar in the inferior one. While on the top it won't it won't do that. And in the y direction as well, as we can see, the rebar uh, needed is more. Why? Because in this case my space in uh, the y direction is higher than the one in x direction. So it needs more rebar as the forces are obviously more. And this is uh, uh, instead of the say top. So as we can see I need them in this area of the balcony as uh, we should uh, as we could have thought both in x um, uh, in x direction not in y direction and uh, in this area as well we need to reinforce uh, this element this is still because of the point load I've set here the thing is this beam as is internal I cannot click that, wait a second, here's um, as a, the base is uh, wider than the height so is, uh, is less stiffness than the other one so that's probably why and then we are going to see the top one the same and uh, so inferior we don't need nothing in both direction while in uh, the top one as well uh, we need it only in y direction so only in this direction so what what we are going to do um, is to see uh, is to add reinforcement where needed so x direction y direction and here in the uh, center of, uh, of, our, of my slab. How to check the cracking? So I'm going to cracking as well. Work ratio in x direction. So as we can see we need to set a little bit of um, rebars as well in x direction. And in y direction it's going to be uh, higher for the same reason that the space between the my columns are uh, are higher so the the forces are um, are higher in that area so now in coming back to my model I've already um, how do we set uh, the rebar only in some areas so first of all I'm going to filter my element, I'm going to see it from the top and um, what I have already set are non-structural elements, non-structural line, so as you can see I have already my line, uh, I just turn on the one I need, so in this in this case this is the slab I need to reinforce, this area as well, and this is my balcony. 
you can how you can draw them obviously you just need to draw non structural line and you can uh, use for example your works your work plane to set them so if you want to if you want to be more detailed you just select your work plane you can uh, amend the division of the element and uh, and you can set it uh, in the area you really wish to uh, you really wish to add your rebars. I usually add uh, my areas wider because obviously you need to also to take into account that the um, the length of the rebar needs to be a little bit wider than the area in which you need to uh, set them. And um, so we select our slab. We start from this one. We go to the reinforcement definition, and uh, in this area we can define or another mesh or a set of bars. For this uh, first floor, I'm going to use the mesh as I already use it. I'm just adding another layer of mesh. While on the top one, I'm going to add rebars. This is easier because I have already, for example, I have already them. Uh, I'm, I'm already using them, I can just use the same uh, mesh, for example. And um, I need it only in the inferior part, so superior, I can say I, I, I want known. And I'm just drawing, selecting my area. So now I have in the inferior part this mesh. In this case, instead, I want it in uh, the superior part, and I'm going to add this area. Okay, I want it symmetrical, so I'm doing the same here. And then doing the same in the balcony. In this case, I could also add, for example, rebar just in one direction. Let's try. So I set the bars. In this case, we'll open both direction. Then going to set anyway feet 10, uh, distance 200, along x. I defined them, I didn't define the area. Okay. And then, uh, so now I've set it for this floor. I'm gonna select the other floor. I will filter it. And uh, in this case, I think these are the two areas on the top floor that I wanted to, in which I wanted to add my rebars. So I select my slab, I'm going here, in this case bar definition, two areas, V8, and I want them on the top, so I just say none at the bottom. I can keep the same spacing, I just will be just a different kind uh, I, I can just add them in the middle of the other, so space would be then uh, um, checked in the construction phase. And here we go. So I select my areas. And okay, so now we have set them, I'll show you my structure, and then um, I will analyze again my structure. It will do as well the iteration twice.
let's see if the rebar I have added on the top is enough to um, to remove the issue with uh, with cracking. Seems so. So now, if we go to the cracking work ratio, percentage is less. So and as we can see in this area, there's no more both x and y direction. The same for if we go to rear reinforcement. In this case, I'm just going to show you that is going to show me x direction bottom. In this case, my is a double of the one I had before. Obviously, more you refine your mesh, more you see it better. Same in y direction. And on the top, we see our areas. I'm going to, to show you this is the, <clears throat> the let's say, the work ratio, the ratio between the one needed and, uh, and the one we, uh, we have. And as you can see, the ratio is less than one. Okay, <clears throat> so this is how to create, check your reinforcement in your lab. If you have any question, you can <clears throat> type them in the chat. And uh, we go further, and uh, I will show you now the, uh, the columns. <clears throat> so I, I will show you uh, now my columns. Uh, I can just take them. So we'll say non here in this area. And now I'm going to see uh, the rear reinforcement of my columns in both directions. So as you can see, um, the, there are, if I select one of them, we go to column calculation, reinforcement, here, or we can just click here. As we can see, we have three uh, bar rebars in this direction, diameter 12, and two in that direction for all of my column. Here is different. I have two and two, and here as well. I have V16. So uh, we go in the other direction, it's the same. In this case, this is all the same because we have only two uh, rebars in this direction, while we have three in the other one, and we'll see the difference between the two of, our, of them. And then we have uh, the uh, uh, we have the other rebar, the um, uh, transversal rebars in uh, this area, in the y direction, and in the z direction. Is a local direction, because it's small, so if you click on that, this is the, uh, the green is the y direction, and the z is the blue direction. Here is obviously more, because uh, as I've shown you, we have uh, a load there, so as you can see, I have my load. Well, what I'm thinking is, well, I have my load here, but well, probably, if I check my force, it's only in this area that I need, really, the rebar. So the software is setting it by default uh, all, along, all along the height of the column. How to change it? So I'm going to have my uh, longitudinal reinforcement, and I want to keep it like it is while I'm going to change the transfer bar. When you want to change something and to keep it, when uh, the calculation will be due again, will be done again, you click on the impose values. In this case, uh, everything we are going to change will keep, will cap, will be kept in the same way when we are going to uh, run the analysis again. 
So uh, in this case, I'm going to set a uh, number of bars, uh, the high in which uh, uh, I need to, I will start them. Uh, that is bottom, uh, this is the, the spacing between them, and this is the diameter. So for example, um, I want to set a higher space, but with a stronger diameter. I start from 0, 0 0.05, and it's going to 0 0.75. I want to go to 1 meter, so I just set 10, and it's going to 1 meter. As you can see, it's already setting them here. Now I want to keep the same size for this column, and I want to say that uh, in this case is 0 0.2, for example, and just uh, uh, for and just for for example for two meters, for one meters. Uh, so I, I set six of them. This case is going to uh, to 25. I probably set five, so. <clears throat> Is keeping this uh, closer. I want to do the same, so 0 0.1, and I want to cover all my column. So I set four of them and the same size. So now I set this kind of uh, transverse bars, and I've imposed my values. I click OK, and uh, and then we are going to change. We're going to see why in this area uh, there, there was this uh, different kind of values. So, <clears throat> and, uh, and this kind of values as well. So I'm going to see, seems that in this case, uh, probably the values are really are, are different ones, but we don't have really a reason to uh, for a different kind of rebars in this area. So I'm going to select it and say, well, I want to keep the one I had in the other one. So I say V12, impose values, and the same for the transfer bar. So I can say, well, I want to keep it uh, zero 01 for all my length, so I say 0, 01, 0, 01, and 0, 01, and um, right. here we go, and I'm just going to set more rebars. Uh, then you need to click on the other area, if not, it's not keeping it, 5, and 10. There we go. So now is along all my length. And now what uh, what I'm going to do is to run the game, the calculation. So it's not actually recalculate all the structure, but just the uh, the design of my concrete elements. As always, needs to do uh, two iterations, and um, now we're going to see if this has changed. And now is it looks like I I want it. In this case, I've just set a random one, but it's still it's still better looking than before. And the same in this direction. So how to check it? The same that we did before. So I'm going to see it. Uh, in this case, there's, a, as I said, 0 0.05 millimeters is giving you that. Well, <clears throat> it's showing you the ratio. Uh, 
is higher here. I've probably uh, I probably have a little bit of forces just in the first five millimeters, so it's nothing really to worry about. And uh, like that, 0 0.78. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this is due to the first five millimeters. And here we go. So it doesn't do it every time, but sometimes in the basis uh, it can happen. For the y direction, it uh, didn't say that. Okay, so uh, we have seen also in this case my um, my reinforcement of the columns. You can obviously to avoid that issue, you can go here and uh, change the transfer bar to uh, start from zero. And uh, then uh, we look at the beams as last one. So I select my beam and I'm going to uh, check my reinforcement. So <clears throat> as we can see um, it's going to be uh, the it's going is higher than the one required. So what I'm going to do is uh, to select, for example, one uh, one of my beam and uh, redraw it as I wish. In this case, as you can see, the rebar quantity in uh, due to the moment is different in this area; is higher. And uh, the same is uh, for the uh, sorry, not that one. Mm -hmm. I thought it was higher, but seems ah, it's delta. Sorry, that's why. So, is higher here the uh, quantity of rebars for this in this length, and as well in this one. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to to see as well, uh, I'm going to check one of a uh, couple of these beams. So, for example, this one, if we open uh, my reinforcement, I'm going to impose my values. And as you can see, we have the real one and, uh, and the theoretical one. So what it's telling me is that the quantity of rebar is enough <laughs> for, uh, for my beam. Uh, and uh, the same for the transfer bar. We can uh, we can probably change it as well as we did for the column. But in this case, I'm acting more on this reinforcement. So, what I'm going to uh, to show you is how to add other rebar. So, as we can see, we have uh, bottom and top. In this case, I want uh, I will um, I will set six of them, both in top and in bottom. So now we have less than expected. I need to add some bars on the left support, while on the right I don't need it. So I add my reinforcement. Uh, I cannot just uh, for example, three of them, as I have six on the top. And uh, here is the position for the moment. So I'm going to change the uh, the position. It's starting now in this way, and I want them as bracket as well. So I can set it at uh, 16 millimeters or 15, let's say and for a length of uh, 600. So now we, we can check it and uh, if, you, if we click with this uh, button we update the calculation and this is what we required and this is what we have. So now my design is 
uh, optimized for this area. We can optimize obviously better, uh, but we have a big, uh, a wide base. So in this case, um, this is uh, enough, let's say. The same is uh, for this element, or we can have a look at this beam, for example. So in this case, has been drawn in a different way. And uh, um, so we have had, we had rebars in this area and this, and this is area. What we can do uh, is, for example, uh, make it, make this bar on the, uh, this bottom reinforcement wider and uh, as well as we want maybe that it arrives over here. So we can just say I want it uh, 16 millimeters or if I want that goes along. Actually the check uh, can be done in this area but if we want to make it uh, cleaner let's say uh, should be minus 400 yeah. and uh, in this case I can say minus 450 and uh, I can uh, say it's a straight bar because I have uh, my beam then continues. So you can set them as a straight bar but actually the calculation is uh, set over here is not changing um, is not changing uh, a lot the calculation. And then we run uh, the analysis again. And um, uh, then I'm going to show you another way to do rebars within advanced design. And there we go. So <clears throat> in this case, if we look uh, now, sorry, at my Z, now is uh, is cleaner. Is like I uh, I did before and the same for this one so now I've had this uh, this different rebar before it was uh, the whole length and now instead is 6 feet 8 uh, 6 uh, rebar di diameter 6 millimeter and then we add our um, top reinforcement so this is um, more or less um, everything about sorry about um, the concrete design uh, what I'm going to show you is that you can also use um, if you if you have the premium version of uh, advanced design you can go to the design area and you have for all your element the possibility to uh, go to beam designer and uh, to design your element um, within the beam designer. So in this case, for example, if I select one of my beam and I click on export to beam designer, this uh, is obviously part of um, uh, other webinars. We will uh, have a look to do it uh, uh, soon. So you can actually uh, use uh, this package that is um, uh, that comes with within advanced design premium version and uh, is the same tool you can use also for Revit uh, for example and uh, for um, uh, for well for advanced steel is uh, the uh, beam designer still uh, still connection that is the same one we have seen in the previous uh, webinar so here yeah, you have uh, your load cases and uh, uh, all your combination. You you can add. Uh, you have all the design assumption. You can change 
the different kind of uh, rebars you want. Uh, here you have um, you extract your beam and you can set also different kind of uh, uh, fixed or, or semi-fixed uh, etc edges. Uh, you can um, um, you can change the settings of your concrete uh, rebars and in, of your concrete materials and um, and the same for covers, uh, details, which uh, kind of uh, reinforcement you want, which kind of, uh, so in this case the reinforcement diameter is the same table we have set in advanced design, but you can change it as well. Uh, beam reinforcement you can change, uh, you can have a look at uh, different kind of uh, anchorage, uh, a different kind of longitudinal, if you have two different uh, two two beams with with a different shapes with different shapes uh, etc now I'm just calculating uh, the the one just to show you a little bit how uh, how it works so uh, as you can see it set automatically this rebar uh, you can export the design uh, you can add the um, units and you can use the settings of the design so to get more details and then as you can see you have uh, your check here and then uh, you can um, uh, I would like to show you the report as well here you can change uh, then uh, you have a lot of settings uh, um, the, there will be a webinar as I said more in detail because uh, obviously we need uh, uh, you need to uh, to um, to have a better understanding of the software, but it's really really detailed and uh, uh, drawings and uh, reports are um, are really detailed as well. So I'm just uh, doing a standard report just to show you. Um, it's more or less the same kind of report uh, uh, of um, Beam Designer. Uh, the steel connection so uh, shouldn't take long to do the uh, report of the beam and uh, as you can see is is really clean and uh, uh, is uh, really detailed so also if you want uh, to check more in detail uh, one of your element maybe the the one with the uh, that has the the um, that has more issues or or that uh, in which the forces and moments are higher you can also uh, you can also set the beam uh, check the beam or the column uh, in uh, detail uh, with uh, with all these parameters and um, and you ch you can check it and you can uh, let's say set the beam as a reference beam and uh, um, uh, so for all the other and just uh, do the report of this one or you can do it for all of your beam uh, and uh, and you will have a really well detailed report with all the information you uh, you wish so <clears throat> um, this is more or less what I wanted to show you um, if I go back to my presentation not this one but there you go. So, if you need a trial of the software, you can send me an email. This is my uh, the email uh, within Greatech. If not, you can just send an email also to support at greatech.co.uk as well. Um, these are the link for the tutorials. And uh, you can have a look also to the references for advanced design, for being designer, so you can have a better understanding of who has used it. It's really wide used uh, in uh, all over the world, I would say. And uh, there are a lot of nice projects uh, that has been uh, uh, created within advanced design. Um, next week, I'm going to speak about um, uh, how to model. So. Uh, we we'll speak about um, uh, how to refine meshes, how to check your mesh if you have mesh issues, which is the best mesh, mesh to use, and then um, 
how to check result on uh, um, on um, <clears throat> uh, slabs, for example, or other uh, plate uh, elements, and um, uh, and then also tension and compression only support uh, and uh, elements and bars. So um, um, these are the other services within Greatech. We do training, support, consultancies, uh, etc. And um, for for all the um, Autodesk product, so as you can see, these are uh, one so a couple of images to show you a little bit what we do. If you have any question, you can type them in the chat. So I can try to answer you now, or I can send you an email later and uh, share if there's something important. We can uh, share the information also to the other attendees. So I will leave you a um, couple of minutes to uh, to see if there is any question. Uh, if not, uh, I will contact you maybe to send you the recording of this uh, webinar and um, and see if you have uh, any, if you want and if you need any other information on uh, about this uh, webinar and about the product as well. Here we have a couple of questions. So, um, what is the difference between superior and inferior mesh in specification window? Uh, so, specification window, uh, is it about slabs or is it about uh, um, Columns or beams. Ah, slab. So we go back. There you go. Okay. So if we go to uh, my slab. Now, wait a second, a bit of a mess. We go to my analysis, here we go. So you mean exactly in, uh, is in, uh, in here, so reinforcement, no, is in, no, sorry, here. Is this here, uh, inferior and superior? So, uh, well, let's say this is the top. So this is um, the uh, bottom in x direction, bottom in y direction, and this is the difference, let's say, between. So this one is the difference between these for the rear reinforcement and this, that is the reinforcement calculated by, that is the one you actually need. So the one you need is 147. The one you have is 168. And uh, the difference, uh, ah, in this case, uh, let's say the difference uh, uh, minus is 21. So this is showing you the difference between them. Reinforcement, the, the additional mesh. Um, ah, okay. So you mean in the bar. So if you go back here in the bar, you have top and bottom. Is this you mean? Oh, I cannot understand, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
additional mesh area. Yeah, yeah, better, <laughs> better like that. So I will probably share that uh, with uh, with all the other as well. Uh, and um, the other question is, what about not orthogonal structural grids? Not orthogonal. So, uh, well, if you have um, uh, holes in slabs as well, um, well, it doesn't. Uh, you can set the reinforcement as well and obviously uh, if you have any of them uh, maybe you you will have more um, forces there uh, as it were as a cantilever and uh, is uh, I would say that is the same more or less the same behavior we had in uh, in this balcony so you have actually a uh, uh, species of cantilever and you can set a uh, for example, bars just in that direction, as I did. Um, for north of terminal structural grids, uh, so if you have, for example, different kind of, um, in this case, we work mainly with the slabs, and I would say that it works, uh, obviously it works as well with the, um, with the walls. If you have other kind of element, you can do that, for example, um, if you set, uh, but you need you should set them probably like um, uh, more um, like a linear element. But I will say if uh, I can create then a case and maybe uh, let's see if I can if I can show you then in a different case that the and uh, uh, and then I will create a video to update in um, that I will uh, upload in uh, in the YouTube. Uh, channel showing you uh, how to work with that uh, because it's not a two-minute uh, thing if it's not a problem. 